Dirk knew he would need help if he hoped to make it in the NBA, and he knew just where to turn. You know, it was roller coasting, you know, up and downs, and so, and I was eight times in the States, you know, because he was sometimes close to giving up. I said, no way, we you know we can get it done. You know, he came over right away. We talked about just hanging there and blah, blah, blah. So he tried to help me as much as he can. So he was kind of like everything to me. He was my agent, my coach, my friend, like my, my second father. He, he just took care of me. His philosophy was kind of like, hey, you know, you're seven feet. Uh, we can make you a great defender and nobody will know you. You know, you, there are a lot of seven footers who can, who can defend the post. And, you know, you're going to make it if, if, you, if you're a great offensive player. If, if you change your thinking uh, of a seven-footer and just be something else and uh, that was always his thinking. We run our routine, you know, we work on the, the, the hand wrist actions, you know, the strengths little, you know, the tools, the hook shot, you know. His drills are, are a little old school. We do a lot of stuff that how they train back in whatever, in the, in the 60s, and just other people, when they see it once in a while, say, what are you doing there? I mean, it looks a little awkward when I, when I jump, you know, through the gym. But I think it's it's good stuff. It's a little different than, than how other people train. You know, he had the weird advices, but I was I still I believed in him, and uh, we kind of had that that chemistry from from the first moment on. You know, uh, you know he he knows me like no one no one else. You know, he just hey, you doing this wrong, and I, I change it, and right away it's it's 100% better against. I don't think there's uh, one single person on this uh, on this world that can teach me what he taught me. So. Uh, you know, I gotta go with it. Holger's advice proved to be just what his struggling student needed. Pavitsky. Dirk improved by leaps and bounds in his second season, and his confidence began to grow. I'm starting to have some more respect for number 41. By the following season, he was the Mavericks' top scorer and rebounder, and led Dallas to its first playoff appearance in 11 years. Dirk Nowitzki left open. You don't want to do that, folks. <laughs> Though the Mavs would lose in the conference semifinals, Dirk became the first player in team history to be named All-NBA. But even as he was blossoming into a star, he would never forget his rough rookie season. How about Dirk Nowitzki? I struggled throughout the whole first year, but, you know, looking back at it now, it was, it was a very important year for me just to get used to everything. It was a, it was a tough year, but I think from, from that first year, I really learned a lot. By 2002, Dirk's difficult transition to the NBA was a distant memory. He had emerged as an all-star, one of the league's most lethal shooters, and the man the Mavericks looked to for scoring. I want to run some offense, okay? Either open court, layups, good rhythm shots, or thumbs down. Here's Dirk again. Nowitzki is on fire. Dirk Nowitzki is the man. Juan Bomber, the German... And as Dirk found success in the United States, he was also embraced as a celebrity for the first time in his native Germany. It's been really amazing. I mean, uh, even my first two years when I came home, nobody really recognized me. I could walk in Berlin, a big city, my hometown even. Uh, I could walk around the city and nobody really cared. They would say, oh, he's tall or whatever, but they, they didn't know who I was. At some point, I just, uh, yeah, I couldn't go anywhere anymore. People recognize me everywhere and start swamping me wherever I go. I mean, it, it, it was a different experience, like I was a rock star all of a sudden. But he wasn't just a solo act. Dirk came to Dallas the same year as another international player, Canada Steve Nash. And having each other to lean on helped ease their adjustment. We both came to a new city, we both lived in the same apartment complex, and we hung out. You know, we didn't really know anyone else. We started off right. Shot money. You know, we went out, uh, went to eat, or went to a movie, or just do some different stuff, not only sit at home and, and think, about, uh, think about Germany. That shot. That was terrible. Yeah, that wasn't the way. 
Steve and Dirk, they spent a lot of time in the gym together. Uh, Steve spent a lot of time in Dirk's here. Those experiences uh, uh, meant a lot as far as character building, uh, as far as those two guys, you know, growing together and really picking each other up by the bootstraps and getting out of a tough situation. The bond forged by Nowitzki and Nash carried on to the court, where they became one of the league's most dangerous duels. That was just a, a fun thing. To have your friend there with you, and, and he's developing as quick as you are. Nash blows by Anderson. Oh, what a wraparound of dirt! Dallas Mavericks, one fan at a time. <laughs> Nowitzki steps inside the arc, shedding Wallace, gets it back from Nash. The Mavericks put on a clinic. After years of losing, Dallas became a high-scoring contender. And Addie Michael Finley gave them a trio of stars. Finley breaks into the open. He's got it Finley against Elliott. The fadeaway by Finley. Dallas wins! <laughs> Big heart, baby. Big heart and a lot of guns. I remember when, you know, 10, 15, 20 wins was a, was a all right season for the Mavericks. But now that's so far in the past. We're taking this whole team from like winning 20 games to all of a sudden winning 50 games. To turn a thing around like that was, uh, was fun to be a part of for sure. With a winning team and two perennial all-stars, things couldn't have looked brighter for the Mavericks. And Nash and Nowitzki were conjuring up lofty visions of the future. We said how we're going to finish our careers together and hopefully get one or two. How many championships ever get here to Dallas? I mean, that, that would have been uh, our goal. Each year they would reach the playoffs, only to be disappointed, as Dallas fell short of making it to the finals. Well, obviously, you know, that's the goal, and it's frustrating. You know, we had a shot. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, we felt like uh, we were always right there, but for some reason in the playoffs, uh, just that little extra something was missing. People don't want to hear, you know, uh, just wait for another year. You know, patience is not part of the package. It's over as the Sacramento Kings beating Dallas four games to one. Their first round defeat in 2004 brought the franchise to a crossroads. After the season, the big three were broken up. And that was the most frustrating thing, that that group didn't get a chance to try to grow together and maybe add a piece or two here from a team that's already really close. When Steve Nash left Dallas for Phoenix, Dirk was left stunned. Uh, for some reason, everything changed so quick. Yeah, it was just uh, it was a little sad, but... As the 2005 season began, Dirk was without the friend and teammate who had been there for support. The question was, how would he handle the pressure of being the team's sole leader as they continued their quest for the NBA Finals?